there's a step further that people can take. Uh, there is a control level. So let's say the, the spontaneous spiritual or mystical experience is completely misleading and cannot be and should not be taken as verification of one's core beliefs. <clears throat> A. B. Uh, however, a well-trained mystical experience under certain circumstances may lead to the verification of certain principles of the spirit and Akashic and you know, etheric worlds. Um, for example, uh, I am a uh, practicing astral projector, and when I get out of my body, um, I'm, I'm still not effective. <laughs> Uh, I still have problems controlling where I'm going, controlling you know the currents and moving properly. However, I have had the experience multiple times, and I have verified for myself that that the phenomena itself actually exists, whether or not it's in my head or whether or not uh, I'm actually leaving my body. I cannot verify that just yet. However, there are methods of verifying that. First, you must develop and hone control over the mystical experience. This is, basically comes down to uh, exerting time and energy, you know, putting your practice in, um, getting to the point where you can induce that particular mystical experience uh, on a whim or fairly easily, <clears throat> and to the point where you can control and, and regulate the experience itself as it is happening. All right, now, let's consider that when I get out of my body and I see that my drapes that are usually white are suddenly green, what does this mean? If I am actually outside of my body, if this is, is a truth, then what is probably happening is that I am, for some reason, projecting a subconscious uh, desire or, or you know, function of my subconscious mind is causing my drapes to be green for whatever reason. So uh, this is, uh, many mystics call this astral distortion or, or mental, uh, mental overlays, I believe. <clears throat> okay, well, how do we know for sure then that we're actually leaving our body? Well, as is mentioned and recommended by um, one of the great occultists of, of uh, the, the recent kind of chunk of time, um, Franz Barden, he recommended getting a deck of playing cards. Uh, also, this was recommended by, actually, um, uh, Robert Bruce recommended getting a deck of playing cards and sticking them facing out in your window or upwards on the top of shelves and hiding them throughout the house. And then when you get to the point where you're out of your body, go check on them and come back to your body and then go see if you are correct. That's a good way to verify it. Um, it takes a moment for you to, to get to the point where you can actually control the experience well enough to be able to verify it on that level. However, that is a critical step. Now, um, now, uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> ah, Franz Barden. Now, Franz Barden recommended slowly... Uh, going further and further from your body. First, being in the same room and making sure everything is the way it is. Verifying it, leaving notes, leaving cards, leaving papers, you know, going and checking them, making sure you got it. He said it may take a while before you actually get it. So this is something that you have to work on for some reason. This is something you have to actually work on adhering to uh, the quote-unquote real-time zone or the astral zone closest to the physical world. However, he insists that it is possible, <clears throat> and that once you get the room you're in down, uh, you know, do your house. And once you get the house down, go do your block. Once you get that down, go as far as you can verify it via walking distance, and then go to friends' houses that are miles away, and then call them and verify to them that, yes, in fact, there is a <laughs> uh, Sports Illustrated sitting on their desk of the December issue with so-and-so on the cover. 
<clears throat> okay, so uh, that being said, we have two types of mystical experiences, the spontaneous uh, or, or um, experimentary, you know, more of the experiment stage of, of working with mystical experiences, which are uncontrolled, which are not a verification of core beliefs or of anything for that matter. Matter, they're just a verification that the phenomenon of the experience actually exists. And then we have a controlled mystical experience that takes time and takes training and takes a lot of energy to get it down right. And through experimentation <coughs> and further control of the experience, one can then verify the experience through a set of experiments. So um, that's that. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many people I know who have completely based their personal faith and, and their complete lifestyle based on one or two spontaneous mystical experiences, which, as we have just discussed, are completely impossible <laughs> to, uh, for any sort of validation or verification. They don't work, they shouldn't work, and you should not base your core beliefs or, uh, or embrace your core beliefs based on a mystical experience that you've had if it is not a fully controlled mystical experience through which, by which, or from which resulted, <laughs> which resulted from uh, training and, and meditation and and getting to know the experience and working with the experience until you have it under uh, a good hold or, or a, a fairly solid grasp and control. So, okay, further long-winded, time for me to finish my lunch. I hope that um, helps a lot of people kind of understand why we can't just take spontaneous mystical experiences and accept them as a proof of concept. It, it, it's, it's silly. Um, you should not do that. It, it, it's a bad idea. Um, you'll end up following the craziest ideas and paths you've ever uh, realized. You'll end up <coughs> having a feeling to do one thing when in fact you don't even understand really the mechanics behind that feeling or what it even where it came from, how it came, why it's that specific feeling. You know, uh, so just be careful with that. And, and if you do decide to use mystical experience as some sort of verification, train on it, repeat it, validate it. Make sure you have it under nearly full control before you use it to verify it. And then verify the experience through experimentation and proper validation techniques. All right, signing out. I'll see you guys in the next video, which is going to be... Uh, fairly interesting as well. It's going to dig a little bit deeper into uh, specific LDS issues. And um, yeah, see you guys next time. Bye.